Croatia. Where the heck is Croatia? Croatia. I've never heard of that country. Central Europe. Okay. Yeah, I'm a very uh, kind of home type of person. You know, I don't get out much. <laughs> oh my God, it's in Chinese. Croatia, right here. Okay. Cool. Yeah, Switzerland. There you go. Croatia. Oh, Croatia. Oh, sorry, Croatia. <laughs> Come on, Wheelie. You know, I I like to boot your names. I think we need to announce because people are late. Uh, Friday live stream starting now. kind of met my quota this morning it was a, a very quick one um but let's take a look at tia bunny kind of in a low bind what exchange do you use bunny for the tia maxi okay and i assume it's futures right mm -hmm. oh not by bit sorry Okay, here we go. All right, you say you got in at oh, this. Okay, so Maxi, you got in at what? Five point eight. Five point eight. So let me just draw a line. see where that is oh whoa okay that's pretty high up okay so entry here let's go to four hour maybe daily well if you look at daily it's not too bad but honestly if you long here it's kind of weird like if you did long here because we just form an order block that's bearish right you see that? I know, I know. Um, but, you know, this is what we call an order block. So order block is when you have two candles, right? You have the one and two. The two is bigger than one, usually even, right? Uh, and if the two engulfs one, that's when you have an order block. So when you form a bearish order block, typically means that the pressure is currently on the bear side. So if you entered literally like right here, um, you know, it's not really ideal, um, but it could be because you enter earlier. I don't know, but depends on kind of where you are. The good news is we, we do have a bullish order block down here. Right, so like right, right around this area. Since we're on daily, we can probably use wigs. So this is a bullish order block. Meaning that we're about to hit that. Um, so if the price were to come down some more by maybe five dollars and ten cents, uh, it might start reacting. So you have two choices, right? One is when the price started reacting, you do a DCA, right? So you want to kind of have some sort of DCA in this zone right here to bring down your average, to bring down your average entry. 
because your entry is at 5.8 right now. Do you know like the position size? How big it is? 5.983. Yeah, so you enter right there. 345. Okay. So 345 TIA, right? That sounds like a pretty decent leverage too, I assume. Yeah, 20x. Okay. I mean, this is where you got to really play it right. Um, assuming that it's going to reverse from this order block, which it can, you know, could be. So let's say you have 5.9A3. And if you want to enter at the order block, let's say over here by the, uh, the open or the close. In this case, it's open, right? So then really what happens is your average entry would be and entering at the same size is what I mean. Your new average entry would kind of go down to about $5.48. The likelihood of this price going back up here before breaking through this order block is pretty, pretty likely, right? So if you want to get out break even, this is probably your play. You know, bouncing off this order block, trying to lower your average by using the same exact size um, and then try to kind of break even as the price come up here. So it's up to you, but this is kind of like you get out of jail card. That's one. Two is we still have this liquidity that we haven't cleared. So there's probably more room to come down. What you don't want to see is we just eat through this order block. So by the time you know we enter this zone, this order block, you should really watch the price. And it looks like we'll get there either today or tomorrow. Something like that. So just pay attention for now. Hopefully that makes sense to you. Alrighty. Alright guys, welcome, welcome. Since you're all here, let's get started. Let's go to my regular charts. Alright you guys, any questions for me? Um, as always. We typically kind of take a look at your questions first. Any questions about charting, questions about trading, questions about current market conditions, coins, anything you want to know, um, questions, feel free to go and type it in chat. We'll start with those. Short term pr prediction. Um, let me take a look. I actually haven't done a short-term prediction, um, and I normally don't do predictions. But since I got you guys all here, potentially I can do a uh, I can do a quick improv. Let me see if there's data here. Okay, uh, ATM implied. Volatility. Let me just grab some data for you guys before I kind of draw it out. Okay. So the expiry today is the 16th. Let's take a look at expiry by the end of the month, the 30th. So we're looking at about 74.85. This is very extensive math heavy. So give me just one quick second. It won't take too long though. Uh, just give me a quick second. Let me give you guys the, the range BDC is going to go. All right, so current price is at what? what 58.520. And that was a 74.85. 74. 85. Till August 30th. Okay, here we go. All right, so here's the range. Four hour market condition USD. Okay. So you see the last time the green box, right? That's basically my previous improv. Um, that was done in August 5th. Everything kind of stayed in, which is nice. So we'll go ahead and change that to the old information. Okay. 
Wait a second. How come a little Yeah, one second, I can't click on my box for some reason. There we go. Okay, so improv two, change color. Let me kinda of put that away. Imply volatility. Or hide that. Alright, so we have a new box. That's the one I just did right now. And the coordinates. Here are the range. 67098. 49. Oh, 941. So we can get as low as that. So uh, we're on a daily, right? So this is from today all the way to August 30th. So this is literally the, the prediction for the next two weeks. Good thing is we do have a order block here. Bullish. Not demand order block. Um, on a daily basis. Time frame. We also have kind of like support resistance here. And technically, you know, the trend line is still kind of going downwards. So if I go with this trend, I mean, I can probably do that. Yeah, sure. This is a good trend. So if I kind of go with this, our resistance is literally here and here. So there's two resistance points which confluences with the peak, right? So I'm really kind of paying attention on whether or not we're going to break out of these two zones, which in this case is about 67,200. That's the top zone. The bottom zone is going to be about 50K. Um, like that's literally the range where we're kind of sitting at. There's also this trend, but this trend has been I mean, can, yeah, this is probably, so as long as we also kind of stay above this trend line, we're doing okay. But with the improv box, right, literally the, the top and bottom range, you know, if I kind of show you what I did before, you'll know what I mean. So this is August 16, uh, imply volatility box. If I show you what I did before. So we have like O improv. So that was the range that it was in before. We have all kinds of range in between before. Like it usually stays pretty well within the range based on options. I mean, there are times like literally it will go to the bottom of this and then like typically stay within those boxes pretty well. So, I mean, I will respect this, right? So if the price were to come down, for the next two weeks, um, I will pay attention at this order block. So the first point of support is going to be about 56k. If we can keep that, then all great. Um, we already kind of tried to visit that and rebound it, but the rebound wasn't really that hard. We also have this trend line that is kind of holding right here. So we also need to break that. We have this, you know, bearish order block we need to break as well. We also have a bearish order block here in here. I guess what I'm saying is if we were to go bullish, there's a lot more doors we need to kind of pry open before we can really go, you know, bullish. So it, it right now it's easier to go bearish than bullish is what the market is telling me. Okay, coming back up. Hold on, you guys are typing too fast. Okay, let me see. Shorts on profit, good, good for your money. What is the function shows bulbs at the right of the screen? What do you mean shows bulbs at the right of the screen? I'm not sure what you mean by that. Colonel, do I use harmonics? The answer is yes, I do use them. I don't use them as much as I should, but harmonics, in my opinion, is a little bit more complex. I have like the full details of how to use them. I took classes on them as well uh, from some of the best in harmonics. Um, I know some people swear by them. Harmonics is really awesome. It's fit based type of tool. Um, I'm just not quite as used to those, those tools yet. So, but harmonics is definitely something I recommend. Uh, this is not hydro block. This is me drawing the improv 
uh, implied volatility. At the later part of my class, Colonel, you will get to learn this. This is the advanced stuff pretty much towards the end. So you get the, the calculation, the formula, and the equation. So pretty much everything that you need to draw these boxes. Uh, and ideas you drive and upload your thoughts on charts. Yeah, so basically, you know, yeah, Colonel, eventually you, you'll get to, you know, to pretty much learn all this. It's just right now in the beginning of the class, we're, we're more talking about primarily the basic tools. As we advance, you, you'll learn all that. In every stream, I see something I haven't on trading. Well, I don't think I use anything you haven't seen, Troy. Um, it just, they're, they're still just, you know, fibs and lines and boxes. It, I just color them differently so it's a little bit easier to see. Yellow, the, the line yellow and blue near the price. Yellow and blue. I'm really confused. Three minute chart. Oh, that's probably okay. I see what. This is not my skill. This this is my four hour portfolio or profile. So we have completely different settings. So this is me looking at you know kind of like the BDC futures. I separate them. All right, DT, last time you said you do max leverage with one BDC. How much room do you give yourself for liquidation? Um, that's a tricky question because when you do max leverage, it's not about how much room you give. It's about, you know, how much movement that you're kind of trading with. Remember, leverage, it's really hard to explain, but I'll try. Okay, so in a blank area, let's say we have a box. Okay, let's just use a very simple box. Let's say your entry is the middle line, right? The bigger the leverage, the smaller the range. Until, assuming you have the same size portfolio, right? The, the bigger the leverage, the small the range you can play before you get liquidated. So if we're trading, let's say we're scalping, and our range, let's say, usually it's only like less than maybe 2%. Let's just say it's 2% exactly, right? So if we have something like this, um, and we have a 10,000, let's say the $10,000 portfolio allow us to kind of play it like this, even at 100x or 200x. Like, like if this is 100x, this is kind of what 200x looks like, you know? So as long as the price doesn't go parabolic, Basically, you know, you're fine because you're scalping really small percentages out of the price, right? But I think most people don't really understand how leverage works. Um, I personally don't think leverage allows people to basically make more money in a sense, unless you just go all in. I think leverage is really designed to help scalpers to be able to make a reasonable amount of money with very minimal movement, right? Because when you only move up and down, let's say a percent or even 0.5%, and you want to make, let's say, $500 to $1,000 out of such a small movement, then you need to have a very big position in order for that to make sense, right? So that's really what leverage is being used for. So don't really get caught up by, you know, a lot of people doing gigantic leverages and then you hear that they get liquidated all the time. That's a misuse of how leverage is really is. So, you know, most swing trades, they're not trading 2%. Most swing trades, they're trading, you know, probably like 9%, 15%, especially if you're doing alts, like maybe even sometimes 20, 30. Within Floxian, you probably also hear a lot of the analysts who are great swing traders. Uh, a lot of times you, you hear them, TP1, you know, it's already 15% up from entry, right? You, you hear those type of trade. If you're doing like 200X during those type of trade, then, you know, it's not gonna work. I mean, it's not that it's not going to work. It's very dangerous when you're doing 200x with a 15% margin movement or, you know, kind of like market movement. Hopefully that makes sense. So it's just kind of like you have to find your comfort zone, you know, for your portfolio and for your management. All right. Any other questions? Um, so the difference between cross and isolated is just the cross consider liquidation of your entire portfolio where isolated only considered that symbol. So isolated is a little bit more conservative, I guess. 
it's not that you need more in cross it's just you need to know what they are the tools and how to use them properly if you don't use them properly and you don't risk manage properly it's very easy to get yourself out all right any other questions any coin you want me to look at um, anything at all yeah so this is a range of Bitcoin I just pay attention to this near sure you can take a look at near real quick all right so here's near let me just turn off all right what would you like to know I mean bar one bar two at the uh, give me a little bit more context demo and fair let me know what you want to know about near same thing with two lefty let me know what you want to know about Apex. give me some context so the more precise your question the better i can answer it yeah like what are you looking for for move up okay so at four hour um, we can obviously, you know, we have a downtrend, right? So if you look at like the, the, the movement, we're currently kind of like doing this. So we're most likely looking for a lower high. So this is currently what Nier is trying to do. So the first thing you can do is perhaps you can draw a trend line just kind of based on this, right? So you have something like this. So potentially that, you know, lower high is going to be somewhere along these lines. So if you're looking for long, you need to kind of wonder within the current range from the bottom to here. Let's see. Are you currently in the midline below? So if the mid is neutral and below is more discount and up is premium, you can decide whether or not you should long or short. So that's one way to look at it. Another way is you can look at different types of support resistance points, right? So that's currently what Nier is trying to do. There is a lot more information. Um, also depends on what the current market is trying to do for, I guess. If you're doing swing, I will use the body. If you're doing scalp, I will use the, um, the waves. But right now it looks like locally, if we're just looking from this candle and, and above. So if I use a anchored volume profile, um, the, low, the low volume, we are currently kind of trading below the point of control probably if we were to be able to climb above the higher volume then we have more signs of you know being bullish but we have this gigantic fall right here right so this has a lot of liquidity which can kind of push the price down so you, we we might or might not want to just kind of go along here you know and to do it with euphoria so i think near if it does want to climb, it has probably some ways to go. Colonel, are you looking, are you asking what this is? The screenshot? Oh, okay. So this is anchor value profile. This is actually a tool comes with the um, trading view. So it's one, two, three, four, five, five vertical down and it's under volume based anchor volume profile. So what it just tells you is at which price point at a, you know, designated range what price point is being traded the most based on data, right? So at here, the point of control is about $4.67. The low is going to be about $3.06, right? And the high is $4.02. So this basically tells you, you know, at what price point people are mostly interested, at what price point people think is cheap, price point people think is expensive. So it kind of gives a little bit of support resistance. The problem is most people don't know how to draw the, the data range. So, you know, it may or may not help you at all. Depends on kind of how you draw the data range because that's how, what matters, right? So for near right now, we still have a long way to climb. Our literal um, kind of like change of character is going to be up here. So until we break above the trend line, until we break through the change of character, I'm not incredibly bullish on near does that answer your question fair your entry is four dollars and ninety cents for long 
If you entry is four dollars and ninety five cents, let me see. Yeah, you enter pretty high. So, you know, remember the box I drew? So let's say we have this and we have something like this, right? So because of the trend line, so your entry is in the premium zone above the 50%. So that means if you want to have kind of like a better outcome for this type of long trade, what you can do is as the price start to visit down, you can DCA and you probably want to be looking for a lower low to DCA. So same thing, you can have some sort of trend line kind of being drawn like this, which, you know, 1.2 point, 3 point, relatively respected, right? So then basically depends on which candle we're looking at because it moves downwards as we progress, right? So we need to first find the lower high. I don't think this is the lower high, right? but we need to find the lower high first. If the lower high is already kind of at your entry, I would consider getting out of your long altogether, just because right now, you know, the price doesn't look like long at all. Um, you know, and I'm not trying to ring on anyone's parade. Uh, I'm very bullish when it comes to crypto long-term investment. I have a pretty decent spot back myself, you know, uh, which are all in red, as you guys probably experienced also. So I still have my spot banks and I'm just waiting for the price to turn around. But I'm not banking on any of those. I'm banking on my scalping efforts. Right now, I just I think the market is trying to find its bottom. So be careful with long trades until we've proven otherwise. Hey, Jasmine, oh, uh, AVAX. So lefty a long open looking to see if it will go up. You got to give me more data, right? So what price point did you open your long for AVAX? Same thing, Jasmine, uh, Leo, you got to give me some context. FIP SPFAN, I mean, you show 10 minutes ago. Yeah, I do use SPFAN as my trend line. I don't normally just use trend line like I draw like these. I mean, these are fine, but I like to use FIP trend line instead because, you know, it gives more confluence than just, you know, multiple touch points. Conservative liquidation. Uh, so for block, I normally use max leverage because I'm a scalper. But when it comes to swing, my leverage is usually around 10 to 20x. For 3x, you kind of have to really understand what leverage is, right? So if you're doing swing trade and you're using leverage, the only reason why you do that is because you have a very limited portfolio, meaning that you maybe have a small size portfolio and you try to trade multiple symbols. So then you don't want to kind of have too much margin in each of your positions. So then you can use a little bit of leverage to split them up. It doesn't really affect the outcome of your total profitability. It, it kind of just splits them up. But besides bigger numbers, you're not really going to see bigger outcome, you know? So, so I don't think most people understand leverage doesn't per potentially give you a more profitability. That's not what leverage is designed for. Leverage is designed allowing you to use less of your own money to enter a trade at a certain amount. Um, so then you can kind of kind of split up your kind of efforts into different pots, if that makes sense. Or leverage can be used for scalper when you're moving very small percentages. So that's usually what leverage is being used for. Okay, you all come there. It's 4.095. Oh, okay, then you're doing great. If I'm missing a zero, then you're doing very good, okay? So if you're doing very good, you're, you're literally near the neutral point, which you probably took this support resistance. You were thinking it's going to bounce off here. Um, and the reason why you think it's going to bounce off is probably you didn't see this trend line forming, right? Because this trend line data, this point is based on these two data, which was, you know, a long time ago, right? So now that we have kind of hit here, um, Assuming trend line is going to follow and continue. But I I don't know if you want to stay long for too long. Well, I mean, you have a pretty decent position to get out. You can probably de-risk if you want to. That's probably something you can do. All right. I think a lot of you guys don't like to give context. In that case, I'm just going to move on. Because I don't answer questions without context. Not that because I'm trying to be tough or annoying. I just know what to say when you just give me a coin and then you don't give me any context. 
What's up, Barrett? All right, after Barrett types, we're going to get into the, the main event. Yeah, if you're in trading view, it's great. Okay, so going live, depends on how hard we're dumping. I mean, we're at a support resistance zone, so I'm not gonna just jump in randomly right now, but if we do, you know, kind of break this current support resistance, I might consider it. Uh, let me just reset some of the data. So we do have our fibs. And we also have a pretty solid fib zone coming right up. So again, when it dumps, you can chase, but if you chase, you're typically limiting your profitability. So you might want to just have a little bit of patience. Um, we do have this pink uh, speed fan trend line. Potentially, if we just went under, um, you know, we're, we're not 100% sure yet. So I like to scalp on three minutes. I like the wigs. So if we have a wig, it might be a rebound. If there's a rebound, then we can look at a very quick, you know, average fib to see how far it's going to rebound back. Minimum is going to be 236. But if it breaks through, then, you know, I might jump in. How are we doing here? We're also crossing the RSI being, you know, oversold. So we're getting to a point where I don't, just based on RSI, I don't know if I really, really want to jump in. Momentum on MACD is okay. It's not incredible, but it's okay. I just don't like the fact that we have RSI here. We have a few major support resistance coming up. Um, and over here, we're not really breaking this block like it's butter. So, meaning there's quite a bit of pressure pushing back up. Like that's more like a butter, right? It's taking a while. Every time the RSI gets to, you know, to the, the far bottom, usually it wants to do the reverse. So my guess is it's probably going to have some sort of reaction at this FIP level, if not before it. So let's take a look. Let's see what we have before too. So we have an MSR here as well. Um, we have another one right around here. Okay, so these are also zones of potential rebounds. And we have this trend line as well. If I want to use Speedfan, I can also kind of take a look at what we have here. Yeah, see, the speed fan is basically telling you we're right at the trend line. Confluences with a lot of different data. So if we reverse from here, it's you know, not surprising. What I want to do is I want to wait for this candle because this could be a reversal. That's why I say I don't want to, you know, just jump into this short. Because, um, you know, we're, we're kind of hitting a, a pretty hard support there. But I don't. I don't know if this bear is over or this, you know, big dump is over. This is the residue of the bear pressure. So depends on how far back we're going to retrace. Let me first identify my bias, right? I don't have a bias yet. You don't want to scalp without bias. So based on this, my bias should be actually bullish, not bearish, because we have a pretty obvious structure. And this is actually a lower high, right? So if we can confirm this is actually a lower high, it will be probably serve you better to, to long instead of short. But that depends on how this candle is going to behave. So Barrett, you know, I'm not saying you should get in or get out of your short. I'm just saying be careful. Higher low, yeah, sorry. I meant higher low. So low, higher, low, high, higher, high. Okay, but if we if we break through here, then it's different. If we break through here, then we're probably looking for even lower, lower high. In that case, I'm thinking probably around this area. And if it reverses from here, you will be a great deviation, which then will be even more bullish. 
Oh, you got in. Wait, what do you mean? 757k. You shorted at 57k. That's far down. Oh, you TP at 57k. I don't know, man. I'll be probably 57, 150. That's just me being a little bit more conservative. Because that would be the, the equal low, right? Okay, we haven't found the bottom yet. MACD is still going. RSI is really approaching oversold. So let's take a look. I'm not chasing this one for sure. We're now entering Fib. Crushing the first one. Rebound at the second one. The candle is showing still great pressure momentum though. So it's rebounding on the second one. Um, if you have a paid trading view, you can use more than two indicators. If you just want to use two indicators, you can always just add them on the bottom. MACD will always be added to the bottom, so is RSI. So if you just turn on both MACD and RSI, you should be alright. You'll see exactly what they are. It just, I changed my colors and stuff. That is a little bit easier for my eyes. I'm not too convinced by the reversal point here, simply because I feel like the, the pressure is still tremendous. But my bias is bullish, so I'm not trying to short here. This is where I need to wait. I need to wait for MACD to printing a different direction if my bias is you know long but remember if you have a strong fall there's usually some sort of corrective wave coming up okay that's good info 57500 which is right around yesterday's close right the orange line is yesterday's close there's no fit there though and we just broke through this MSR. So I'm I'm guessing we'll probably retest. If we do come down, this will be a 236 retest. So if we were to have let's say a couple more candles and come back up to 236 and then show strong signs of you know bear my entry would actually be around here for short but if it does come back up and bre break above the msr then i'm just gonna long it around that area so right now the momentum is still very much short or bare so i'm still waiting how is the rest of the market oh it turned red all of a sudden huh everything is random so that's another way you can kind of look at your bias. So maybe my bias is wrong based on this. So what this could be though, is this could be the beginning of an Elliott wave. So we have wave one, two, this is the third wave. We're looking for the fourth wave. So even more down. Since we already missed the third wave, our entry opportunity is going to be on the fourth. So this does look like an Alia wave then. In that case, my bias is bare. And we're looking for the retest to enter. So I'll probably enter 3BDC for the short. Let's update our bottom. 236 is sitting exactly at MSR. Okay. So this will be kind of looking like, like the beginning of a retest. Again, based on how it retests, right? Retest doesn't always mean success. So you want to wait for your price action to prove to you uh, the success or not. And then I'll probably just TP around here. 
So assuming retest is successful, here's my entry. Oops. I don't really have a stop loss, but if you want one, you'll be probably above the 382. TP is going to be right around 150. This will be a, you know, very quick 3R trade. Something like this. So we have a few candles, meaning that we have a few minutes to kind of see this through. Okay, here's a sign of reversal. MACD, you probably prove it. Yeah, MACD is here. RSI is coming back to neutral. Um, let's do a quick anchor. The amount of time it's been ranging. Probably do an anchor up to, let's say, this point. Okay, it's probably too far. Let's do this point. Oh, same. How about the most recent? Yeah, there we go. So with this downfall, the anchor sits also at the MSR for the retest level. So I'm actually going to submit a short trade right here. Limit. Let's just do 2 BDC for now. At the 236. So if you're wondering, it's 57, 780. So that's my short. What do you mean? Oh, this is just momentum directions, right? So when it's more red, is the direction of bear. When it's kind of like pinkish, meaning that, you know, you you have toppled, right? So the momentum is now on the opposite direction. So this limit trade is without confirmation, meaning it's somewhat risky. You can wait a little bit before you enter, especially if you're new to this. You're new to my um, scalping channel or my scalping live stream, I guess. Doesn't necessarily mean bear is gone. It just means that the momentum is currently shifting because there are also times where it can go, you know, like this, right? So you can go down and then come back down again, go down and come back up again, right? So you can kind of do a swing motion. All right, so we're now in the retest zone. So I enter right around 236. Uh, it looks like it wants to go to 382. I mean, it can. Valley gap in scalp is not as respected, so I'm not gonna be banking on very value gap. Okay, it's being pushed back down. My TP is gonna be roughly around right here, about you know, 57, 136, maybe 150. Something like that. I'm currently in. I'm in short right now. Oh, you're looking at EMA too? Yeah. I fear if I pulled out EMA, you guys will be, you know, hurting your eyes. Because it's too complex. <laughs> I already have a lot of stuff on my chart. I also find EMA is not as well respected in the uh, scale range. Time frame. I mean, it's too low of a time frame. But it's literally 
the top of the MSR. Right now we're kind of at the point of control. What we want to see is, yeah, closing below the point of control. So that's a good sign. Momentum is still shrinking, but I have a feeling that this is going to be the retrace. I mean, it can go to 382 if it doesn't have enough to go down. In which case, I'll probably add one more. TP is 57150. I mean, if we're if we're talking about a alley wave, right? The safe TP would be here. Safe TP would be 57570. So that's like an absolute no questions your TP, right? If you want to wait a little bit longer, you can set for the lower lows. Um, because today we started scalping a little bit later. We had more questions earlier. So I might just set my TP at the previous day time close. Maybe I'll just set it here for a quick 500 bucks. If you enter at my entry and right now you have a little bit of drawdown, like don't worry. But we will potentially DCA if the price were to go up more, especially if it goes 3 or 2 or 0.5. 618 is also a great level where it can potentially reverse as well. But if you're looking at it, the, right now the bullish price, we, our RSI is getting back to neutral very quickly, but our price movement is very small. This is called absorption, also known as divergence. Right? So that means we're probably going to go somewhere bare. So I'm not freaking out. I don't normally do stop losses. Again, if you're looking at this, right now the movement it's only like 0.16% block, right? So there's really no reason to have a stop loss when you're looking at less than 1%. Even if it goes to my DCA, let's say around 618, from my entry to 618, that's only like 0.57%, still very small. I have a feeling it's probably gonna stay within this trend line though, this speed fan trend line. And the high here is 786. So my DCA could either be 786 or 618. It just depends on what the price looks like. What do you mean by equilibrium? I'm not familiar with that term. What's up, Yan? You've been quiet today. Are you in a noisy place or what? <laughs> I thought so. <laughs> Funny. Well, you might be able to make whatever money you're about to spend. <laughs> that would be funny. So, hey, how, how, how do you want to uh, pay for this bag? Well, hang on. Just let me finish my stream and I'll, I'll let you know. <laughs> They go, go home, huh? Can't trade with that concept, though. That's a bad mindset to have for trading. All right, so we're at 382. Again, showing pretty significant, um, pretty significant rebound. I'm just gonna go one here. Depends on how the candle is gonna look like. Preferably, we want to close below point of control, which is the white line here. I mean, I don't know, for you or your girlfriend. Girlfriend. Honestly, I'm, I'm not a big LV fan. So. Uh, my wife is more Dior person. 
I like the ore a little bit better. Oh, it's reversing. Okay, good. So 382 was a good point of reverse. If we print a bearish order block, I will add one more BDC to the position. 57816. Bunny, are you in short? Okay, good. So we're waiting for order block to print here. If we haven't printed the order block, it could potentially still go up. So be careful. I am a boomer. Um, well, my wife is not really a, all about luxury life. You know, we, we like to keep things simple. Okay, six seconds. Not a very convincing close. Honestly, I feel there's a little bit of luck, a lot of hard work. So I don't think I'm anyone special. I've, I've known people who retire way younger than I did, um, way more talented. So if you've really seen them all and you have a mentor who thinks you're broke, <laughs> yeah, it keeps you humble. One of my mentor makes like a couple hundred thousands without lifting a finger per hour. So when you know somebody like that, you see his, you know, wallet, you see his account, you'd be like, yeah, uh, what I'm doing is nothing. No reason to, you know. Um, he he has multiple businesses. I don't think he ever disclosed to me the full portfolio. He didn't really have to, but he has a lot of investment account too. The majority of it is the empire he's built, right? So, passive income is basically when you no longer have to manage yourself, meaning that the money comes in with or without your attention. That's what I mean by without lifting a finger. So you could potentially own an enterprise um, where you have, let's say, 500 to 1,000 employees and you're generating passive income by being the owner or being the majority shareholder. And then you're just kind of waiting for those quarterly reports. You can also do that. So it's just, you know, it's all scale to perspective, right? It's very hard to imagine for somebody who, you know, works a nine to five being, you know, very casually average. That's different. <laughs> Colonel, take it at your whatever your time in. I'm always available for you. Just reserve it when you when you want. Yeah, one of the things I've learned in my past experience of, you know, being an entrepreneur and learning personal development is that your mindsets and your perspective really matters. If you think making a couple thousand dollars a month is very difficult and takes a lot of work and a lot of time, then it's very, it's almost impossible for you to see anything else different, you know? So it's important to kind of associate up, right? Put yourself in a room or put yourself in a group community of someone who you want to become and then start trying to provide them value, get to know them, Sometimes, you know, you'll meet good people who's willing to share. A lot of them like to be very reserved and left alone. So it just depends on who you meet. Okay, so now we're really reversing. Again, don't freak out yet if you're in the short. Okay, so we're currently at this trend line level. We still have this trend line and this 7A6. So we're just looking for a great opportunity to DCA. The bias remains the same. The bias is unless we break the change of character. Uh, in this case, actually, I'm sorry. The bias is the, the Elliott wave. The Elliott wave invalidation is going to be somewhere along the lines of 7A6. So we cannot have the price go above 7A6. Therefore, I think my DCA, final DCA is going to be near 618. 
because if we're trading this as an alley wave, um, in order for alley wave to be true, assuming this is the third, and we're kind of looking at the fourth wave currently, the fourth wave cannot enter to the range of the first wave, which is this one, which is sitting exactly at 786. So this is a great reverse, you know, reversing off the trend line almost exactly like textbook. We're closing and open right around 382, which is another great kind of indication. And we really didn't have to DCA, but if we have confirmed our direction, we can always add more to the current position. For example, if we were to close this current candle as a bearish order block based off this long blue candle, meaning that if we close before the open of the previous blue candle, then I'm going to add more position because then it's pretty confirmed that our way is down. The business I retired me, so I had a legal practice I built um, that focuses on traffic tickets in the US. So I had that and with a few partners. My second business was personal coaching. So I taught a lot of different people. And the third business I had was finance, teaching people how to retire. So I was able to sell all those businesses and basically generated what I needed for retirement. How many percent of your account size do you use per trade DCA entry? Um, I don't really have a set percentage per se. I think you're asking that from the baseline of you should only trade 2% of your total portfolio. That rule doesn't really apply here as I was scalping. So I'm more a buy -in. maybe half position or full position. To kind of poke through and close below this current bullish order block. So that's the first hurdle. Yeah, now I'm just, you know, doing trading. I can't tell you how many times I tell my students I I basically encourage them to learn trading more than being an entrepreneur. A lot of people still have this dream about building their own business. And I, I, I really ask them why. It's so much work, so much worse. <laughs> the scalability is very hard. There's just a million reasons why you don't want to have a business. Uh, it's very hard to become successful also. It depends on what country you're in. It's exponentially harder, right? All right, that's why I said you guys didn't really too, need to worry too much about the drawdown. Now we just got to close below. Yeah, I've heard so many stories like that where you have to kind of give your life to build a business. It's too much work, yeah. Very familiar with that. <laughs> there you go, Wolf. That's the way to do. That's the way to go, man. I I tell my students, you know, I'm I'm very plain and simple math. It's so much easier to achieve the same financial goal by just trading. Uh, another reason why I'm coaching trading now instead of coaching entrepreneurship. But the mindset you learn from entrepreneurship is irreplaceable, in my opinion, just because you can really handle the swings of up and down times. Right. So, so what you learn, uh, how you become a tough person in terms of mentality and mindset, you have a very strong mentality, very strong mental strength. I think that makes character, right? And that really is irreplaceable by trading. Obviously, trading also kind of, you know, makes you very strong and tough, too. But if you kind of come into trading without that mindset, it's very easy for you to break down, in my opinion. If you're wondering what the heck we're doing, wave four is typically ranging. The wave four, uh, by its nature, will like to range a little bit before it actually start the wave five. So this is just wave four doing its thing. So, you know, don't worry too, too much about it. 
We haven't really reached 0.5 yet. <laughs> yeah, don't start big, and get a trader. So that's where you would begin. Yeah, joining Foxian is a good start. Depends, because the candle can really go way up. Um, so I'm not 100% convinced. We did cross, so Bank D is now showing bullish momentum. Again, not to worry about this. I think my initial DCA is probably going to be around 618. The, the range of margin is so small. I'm not really DCAing just because I want to save my DCA for bigger movements. There's no, really no reason to DCA in my opinion right now. Our final, like, you know, our final range of resistance is going to be up here by 58,200 ish. What we want to see is RSI slowly climbing up, but without price moving too much. Because the higher RSI go, the more likely that it start to dump, right? So we're, we're really looking for this absorption happening. So one way you can do is if you can scalp right regularly and be able to, to generate profit, then you can think about transferring kind of like your income into some other different asset categories, right? But then it really depends on what you really enjoy because there's so many different things, right? You have life insurance, cash value life insurance that takes very little if you're young. It's not so good if you're older, right? But if you're younger, it's a great vehicle. Um, you have real estate. If you want to collect rent and be a landlord, that's a possibility. Just be careful which country you put money in. And you also want to pay attention to, you know, how the interest rate in that country is working. Uh, so there's just different categories. You can also put that into a spot bag if you want to, you know, um, kind of ride this wave to the next moon. Potentially, if you... I mean, there's just so many different things you can do, right? I know some of my friends um, have a fleet of Ubers. So he bought a bunch of cars and leased them out to Uber drivers and then basically do a share profit type of deal. There's just a lot of different things you can have for passive. Yeah. You can do Airbnbs. Um, there's a, a whole bunch of different things you can potentially do. You can also invest a bit into the S&P, the index funds. If you have any, um, if you read any of the Warren Buffett, if you know this guy at all, right? Warren Buffett literally won a million dollar bet for charity when he had basically bet against some of the best hedge fund managers saying that if he just invested in S&P 500 index fund uh, in a seven year period, his outcome will be better than the hedge fund managers. And he won, right? So if you just want to have a passive income that slowly grows on an average of 8% for the past uh, 80, 90 plus years, you can also kind of put a little bit into that stock if you want to. So there's just a whole bunch of different things you can potentially do. It's a slow climb. I mean, if we longed here, it would have been nice. That's almost a 1% move, right? So if we had long here for two BTC, this would have been about $800 profit, maybe a thousand. But that's really against a lot of confluence and odds. So this movement to me is unpredicted.
What do you mean of oh grid bots? Um, honestly, grid bots they do work. I've I've kind of done an extensive experiment on them. They're just not very smart. So there's different strategies. You still need to know kind of what you're doing in terms of charts. So they're not a full proof, uh, a full proof type of strategy where you can just kind of set it up and be done with. Also, grid bots is another kind of like another source of revenue for a lot of the、uh, exchange to collect fees, because grid bots is basically banking on you buying and selling all the time. And each time you buy, sell, you pay fees, right? So it depends on the size of what you're trading. You could be paying quite a bit. So I'm not 100% sure if that is the best passive income strategy. Another thing I like to kind of do is diversify, right? Because imagine if one day crypto have a lawsuit against the SEC in the U.S., causing the bank to have a black swan event. If everything you have is in crypto, then it's going to be devastating for you, right? Just like for those people who only own real estate, you know the recent interest rate hike knocked out a lot of landlords who are currently on loans, right? Because especially when they're on variable rates, it really changed their dynamic of their portfolio. Imagine that, right? So nobody saw COVID coming. Those people who were comfortably collecting rents basically had a yeah Japan thing too with the forex,、um, and now they're raising interest rate, not lending money to you know. Foreigners are cheap anymore, so it just things can really happen at any moment if you just have one diversity. Like you literally just have one thing that you hold.、Um, I don't think that's the best strategy. You want to have, you know, at least two to three different categories of financial products to kind of help you build. <laughs> Well, you know, can't really foresee the future, just like I didn't foresee this long momentum here. I've been doing scalp for I think I started a journey around April, so I really seriously got into scalp about four months ago. But you can't use my time versus somebody else's, because I'm a accelerated learner, meaning that when I Tried to do something I geek out, so I spend probably 14, 15, maybe 16 hours a day. And since I don't have work, right, so that's all I do. Yeah, hyper focus. All right, so this is a potential point where I might want to DCA you guys. So I'm waiting for this candle to show a little bit of confirmation. I like the triple trident type of you know tail. Or、uh, wick, so I might just DCA, adding one extra BDC. So I'm doing a half position DCA. So next candle is going to be crucial. If it rebound right above, then I'm not going to get in. But I do like MACD is kind of flattened.、Um, we're kind of like neutral. If it goes up again, touching the pink line, I might just add one, or I might add one right now. I kind of like what I'm seeing. I'm just gonna add one right here. Okay, so I DCA. When you retire, did you just have a lump sum? No, I have multiple financial products that basically creates passive income for life. You know, you have a lump sum and then you put them into investment, right? Otherwise, what are you gonna do with a lump sum of money? Put it in the bank. So you never want your money to be stagnant in the bank, right? Bank is only a place of a kind of like a transactional purpose. I don't like to keep money in the bank because inflation hurts. We always teach the the biggest enemy of wealth is inflation, taxes, right, and lack of knowledge. So you gotta learn those three things. If money is important to you, that is. Yeah, the biggest enemy of wealth is inflation, taxes, and lack of knowledge. 
I think Trump says it really well, right? Because Trump says that all the people are taking advantage of the same rules. If you can only complain about the wealthy taking advantage of it, then, you know, they, they don't really take you seriously because the rule applies to you too. So it's about finding ways to kind of play by the right side of the, the rule instead of complaining how the rule is bending, right? Okay, so we have a surge of additional momentum. I might DCA some more. That's why I only DCA half a position. So I'll DCA one more around 618. Remember, we need to find enough liquidity for our fifth wave to happen. So fifth wave, before fifth wave can happen, liquidity has to be met. So it goes up, it's normal. Well, Troy, this is a paper account, right? So this does not reflect my financial resources. I'm just trading live here and trading view for you guys to all see. Yeah, I'm pretty discreet, man. I, I keep things private. Yeah, no worries. You're good. But a lot of the people who participate in these trades, I mean, they're making money left and right. So these are live trade, right? So it doesn't really matter what portfolio you're using, whether it's paper account, real account. All right, 61A is met. I have a feeling this is it, but we'll see. What I want to see is a close below 61A. Um, you don't necessarily have to be rich to retire early. You just need to know what you're doing. Okay, this surge of momentum, as long as it doesn't close above, it's okay. Are we getting close to uh, New York Open? I think so, huh? So New York might open in the opposite direction, which is bad. In which case, you know, We'll go ahead and DCA this. Um, depends on the candle, but this candle is completely out of the expectation. So right now we're just gonna sit tight. Because this is obviously not a normal candle. Meaning that when it comes down, it will probably have a not a normal come down. <laughs> it's just a surge of volume. Not to worry about this. But this has completely invalidated uh, the uh, Elliott wave. So then my DCA is probably going to be somewhere up here. So now we have broken the BOS to create a new higher high. So this was my original bias, right? The original biases were bullish. So as we create a new higher high, we'll probably have to come down for a correction. I'm not sure it's going to go to 60K. Probably like 59-ish. This is a manipulated candle. So when I say manipulated, it's probably a lot of limit orders uh, for the pre-open, pre-market open just got filled. So this is an institutional candle. That's why I don't like to trade around the time of market opens. It's just because when these orders fill, like you have no idea what direction they're going to go. Wait, how big of a size did you get in, Yen? That sounds a little tight. 59, 8, 19. What's your liquidation amount? Total loss. No, 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 not the total BDC. Not not your position, but how much money you lose by liquidating it. 3,000? Okay. Yeah, 3,000 is not too bad. Based on the size you're trading, 3,000 is not incredibly horrible. But we're hitting a, a pretty solid support right here. I mean, resistance right here. 
So what we want to see and start DCAing is when we start traveling the reverse direction of the previous BOS. This is textbook, right? So as this comes down, we're definitely going to DCA and probably heavy. So this is a very critical candle right here. Depends on how this plays out. Our DCA, you know, because we don't want this to be too, too shallow. Yeah, but you want to DCA hard. So this is where you want to DCA at full position. So we want to get it right. We don't want to get it wrong. Because this could be a temporary reversal. If it's a temporary reversal, then it's not going to work too well for you if you DCA here. That's why you want to be patient with this one. Ideally, we want to get our current position. If we want to get out, we want to get it to at least 3A2 line, right? So if we kind of look at the averages, uh, if we're looking at average entry, I know it's getting a little bit you know, hard to read. Um, so if I turn off everything else, let me see. And turn off this. Okay. So if assuming this is where we DTA, the 0.5, if we do basically uh, a three position here we'll move our price to this point uh, maybe four position we'll move it to here so the ideally we want it to kind of get it up to a point where we can get out you know so that's kind of what we're what we're hoping to do but this is doesn't look like the the top so i probably wait a little bit We're not sure if the liquidity grab is done yet, so. The next candle is gonna really tell us. If it shoots up, then this is just, uh, you know, a very small correction wave. So we want to hang on because the BOS we barely cleared. Usually a higher high shouldn't be this close to the previous higher, the, the previous high. Unless you're taking into account the width where it should be, right? So we did close below a very significant level. This pink um, fit line is based on a macro scale. So that's good. But we have no order block here. We have nothing. Let's take a look at one minute. So one minute, we do have a pretty decent. So if I look at one minute and looking at the current fib yeah that's basically below a 236 and it's kind of like going back up based on this so i'm not really ready to dc it quite just yet i'm still waiting for this to play out All right, you guys, if you guys are in, in the trade, I'm pretty much going to stay on until either break even or get out. I won't leave you hanging. <laughs> in Kupo, we trust. I'm not 100% though, you know, but we'll know when we need to cut. Right now, we, we don't really need to cut yet. This is a learning experience too. Uh, develop your ability to kind of withstand drawbacks, kind of stomach it. We're really, the RSI is really picked out too. So that's a good sign. I have a feeling this is it. If this candle prints white, I'm going to DCA. Kind of you're immune. 
Immune is not a good idea. You want to feel the butterflies, but within control. That's the best. Full confidence. That's good. All right. Now we're having like a decent reversal. So I am going to DCA here. I am adding two more BDC, currently five. So as we are approaching So in case you didn't catch, uh, I just DCA it again. So our goal right now is just to break even. Really not looking for crazy. Uh, I DC I have three position and I added two more. I added two more BDC. Cause I have a feeling that if it does rebound again, I wanna give myself room for additional potential uh, DC opportunities. I didn't wanna go too big. Because it looks like this is gonna hang a little bit. I don't feel like it's going to go straight up and down. 59, 8, 19. Well, first of all, you're 59, 8, 19. You're still good. It's not too bad. We're not going to really go up to high. In my opinion. So you should okay. Well, yeah, if DCA, then you're, you're kind of closing that range. You're currently at one point. How much position? One point three five. So you can probably do a half position DCA. Uh, but wait for this candle to confirm. If we print a bullish order block, don't DCA yet. But if we were to close below the pink fib, then you can definitely add a DCA. Maybe add a like a point seven, something like that. I mean, I DCA to kernel. So again, like I said, if we close this candle below the pink fib, you can DCA because that's additional confluence or confirmation that the pressure has shifted. So we got about 20 seconds to close. Let's take a look. But if we print a bullish order block, I wait. Okay, so we did close below. Um, it's kind of doji-ish though. But if you want, you can DCA a little bit. Small position is good. Yeah, I would get in again. Zero point seven. Yeah, four minutes to open. So right now the the scary part is we don't know how the open direction is gonna go. That's the scary part. But I have a feeling the next four minutes will probably if we can see this kind of candle, we'll probably see something quickly too. If we print a bearish order block, you know, that's a huge plus. So again, like I said, I'm shooting for some sort of break even. So my TP right now is just gonna be you're at 58, literally 58,000. So that's my TP. Your hard stop loss. I mean, let me think about that. What's your current entry? 
Yeah, because right now we have already proved our initial idea of this is the Elliott wave is invalidated. So I'm not really looking for this to go down incredibly hard. Right now the goal is just get out of the trade, right? So that's why we're DCing, trying to either be or trying to kind of put ourselves in a point of a, a small profit. That's why I'm moving my TP up because I'm just trying to get out at this point. So 58065, 58 zeros. Yeah, so you're roughly right around my, my range, right? So that's good. 58086. So we're literally right at the same range. That's a good range. What do you mean by GP? Golden Pocket? Oh, no, I don't use Golden Pocket. The TP here is based on this order book. <laughs> 59278. I don't think it's gonna go that high though. 59278, but that's pretty close, right? That's right around this range. Oh. So that's not good. So we have multiple uh, long wicks down. But still, I mean, the fact that we're closing below the pink Fibonacci, I think we're okay. As long as we continue to close below it. But right now, the pressure is pretty high on the bullish. The Fib is holding, which is a good sign. This is where the music has to kind of keep you calm a little bit. Don't freak out, guys. Let it come. Don't freak out. <laughs> there you go, Carlos. I wish I played music like that. Yeah, you want to make sure you have things to help you control your impulses, you know? Because sometimes emotion gets in the way. So guys, let me explain. The, the wicks you're looking at right now are the fair value gaps, right? Because of this gigantic candle. So there's a lot of long orders that didn't get filled. So every time it goes down, it gets kicked up. It's simply because they're just orders need to, to be filled. But the fact that we never were able to fill above the pink fib, that tells me the selling pressure is bigger. So eventually, you know, all these fair value gaps is going to get filled. And then it's, that's when it's going to come down. Yeah, I, I wouldn't say the, the Wix looks real bad. It just, that's just fair value gap being filled. And the market already opened. The fact that we haven't completely kaput, right? Means that we're, we're okay. probably going to have some resistance here. We're going to have some resistance here, maybe some here, and then eventually kind of work our way down here. It's going to take some work. Patience. RSI still proved that we're doing good. MACD is showing a pretty consistent momentum direction. So both are on the bear side. I might consider adding a little bit more position if we were to kind of go up and revisit the pink fib again. So it depends on how, how this is going to do. 
price action wise. I like the fact that MACD is pretty consistent. So 58072. Yeah, so we're roughly at the same place then, Good.